friends, welcome to a Cascade Crochet video. Um, today I want to have a chat to you about what to do if the vision you have for your project inside your head, um, the sketches that you have, don't end up quite matching what you um, produce for whatever reason, whether that is due to technical reasons, um, so whether or not the stitches don't quite, quite match up or it doesn't look quite right or, you know, for any reason, so if your vision and then your reality don't quite mix. Um, so I know it can be really disappointing, first of all, let's just get that out of the way. It can be incredibly disappointing when you have this grand idea in your head and what ends up coming off the hook at the end of the day doesn't quite match that. And for a first project, um, I'll definitely warn you that that can definitely be the case. Um, so my first project was the Eagle Tail Shawl. That was my first original design. And I just want to show you. So that was essentially <laughs> the shape that I had intended to work with. So we've got some like big feathers up the top and then like a nice um, section of, you know, just smaller feathers and then like a big dramatic tail. Um, for those of you who know the pattern, uh, you know that it hasn't turned out, it didn't turn out quite like that. <clears throat> so I just want to pull this over to you. So you can see that we're pretty much just working all with smaller feathers at the top. So those big feathers that I drew in my sketch did not come into fruition in this one. Um, our big dramatic tail did, which is fantastic. So we've got our big dramatic tail and I do um, basically have options where you can add a little bit more drama by adding extra threading to the tail, um, which is what I did with the first first run of that. So, so what? How do you manage that expectation of you know? Yes, I'm going to have this grand design, and then what comes off your hook? You know, it's like along the same vein, but it's not quite exactly the same. Like, I just want to tell you. Don't get discouraged. Um, for those of you who have seen my parrots in flat shawl, um, you probably noticed that it's a lot closer to that original design. And so the parrots in flat shawl is the third shawl that I've designed. Um, so I guess my eagle tail shawl um, ended up being maybe a prototype for that kind of winged, tailed, fantastical delight uh, that is, that has now become the Parrots in Flight Shawl. And quite possibly in the future going forward, um, I've got like probably about five ideas that I've, that I'm playing around with in my head at the moment. Um, but eventually that shawl that I sketched out on that first, on that first day, that first big design idea that came to my head, that will end up being um, a shawl design. It's just that when I first started um, pattern design, you know, I'd only ever worked from other people's patterns. Um, of course, I'd made sort of all of my own alterations to different different kinds of patterns um, that still makes, them, makes it their pattern. So I'm not saying that, you know, I've like improved upon anyone else's pattern. I've just made changes that I guess made sense to me. Um, but that, that original design, you know, it might be that, you know, that you, you don't end up getting to that stage until you've got a little bit more experience with the design process. Like if you can envision that, like the perfect pattern and you can design it like spot on, then like hats off to you if I ever wore a hat, which I don't very much, but I should. Um, <laughs> um, hats off to you, that's like amazing. You, you have my utmost respect, but sometimes during the pattern writing process, things will change. So as you're designing, you might have different ideas that pop into your head to say, oh, well, actually, what I thought about in that, in that original sketch, it's not gonna quite work, but I think this might work in, in its place. 
so the pattern writing and designing process is all about um, adaptation so changing your mind as you go and it's really important to remember that you should adapt your expectations at the same time that you adapt the pattern um, from the sketch or the original design to what it ends up being. Um, as I said with, with my first pattern, um, I definitely had no idea what I was getting myself into, so I didn't quite know, um, I guess, how to, how to make it work, but as I've, you know, progressed along and I've designed um, my, my shells in the mirror shawl and then the parrot's shawl and then the snowflake blanket, which is still coming. Um, I'm still having issues with, with the count. So it's not that there's something wrong with the count. It's just that my brain isn't processing it um, properly. So I can like count, you know, five and then be like, wait, that doesn't look like five back and forth, back and forth anyway. So the, the FND is a conversion disorder. So basically my brain and I guess my cognition skills aren't quite matching up. Um, anyway, so I find the, the counting process a little bit difficult. Um, but I would say that since my very first pattern, um, my skills have definitely improved, my expectations of myself have improved, and my ability to actually see a pattern in my mind and then replicate that onto, um, onto thread and then onto a page, that's improved like dramatically. So I just basically just want to say to you, you know, for your first pattern, your first half a dozen patterns, your first dozen patterns, or any pattern really that you're designing, if your original design, if that original sketch, if that original idea, and what ends up coming off your hook at the end of the day don't quite match up, that's okay. You know, you've got like so many more opportunities where you can make that a reality, you know, sort of later down the line, like if you, you might, you know, say, oh, you know, I wish that that would work, but it doesn't quite work. But then you might learn a new technique and then all of a sudden it works. So what I'm saying is that as we change our patterns, we need to change our expectations of ourselves. So don't get disappointed, you know, there's, there's always so much more opportunity to create that exact piece that we had in mind. And I'm absolutely, absolutely confident that you'll be able to create that exact piece. It just might take a couple of tries and you know what? That's okay. That's fine. We need to be um, a little bit more gentle with ourselves when we're in the designing process, just because we have all we all have very high expectations of ourselves and we all have very high expectations of our skill level. And um, so we're a lot harder on ourselves than we would be on anyone else. You know, just keep in mind that you need to be your own cheerleader. If your friend was coming to you saying, I'm having so much trouble with, with a pattern I'm designing, it's not coming out quite the same as what I imagined, but I still like it. Would you sit there and say, no, that's terrible. Go back to the drawing board, start again. No, you would cheer them on. You'd be, you know, saying, yes, it looks really good. I love what you've done. Um, you know, you need to do that to yourself. So as the vision on the page changes to what's on the hook, and even if they don't quite add up, um, we need to change the expectations that we have on it on ourselves basically that's what i'm trying to get across here i actually tried to record this video i would say in excess of 20 times yesterday um to the point where i was like just stuttering like crazy because you know the things weren't working and then i was losing my train of thought and then i had johan come in who's my lovely little manx cat um 
to just cause trouble like havoc. He was, you know, just doing a test run for the structural integrity of the house. So head into walls everywhere. Um, very, I mean, it's very entertaining, but it's very distracting as well. <laughs> um, so I'm finally glad that, um, I guess I've managed to get this out in a way that, uh, that I'm happy with. Um, again, tempering my own expectations <laughs> of myself. Normally when I record these videos, um, it's sort of a one and done. Um, you, you may notice that from some of the videos that I've created, I've done in the past where I'm just basically like, yes, good, get it done, go off. Um, so basically my friends get notification, you know, as it's going into the upload, hey, I just recorded another video. So I guess that's a really good real world example of just, uh, I guess, recovering mentally um from my the expectations that I had set and so I'd written down in my notebook of all the all the different videos that I want to make for you guys um this was a really important one to me and yeah yesterday just really showed you know what do you do if you know what you've written down on paper doesn't quite come in, come out to match reality and what it was was just you know have a you know, relaxing beverage, watch a couple of movies, just chill, don't be too hard on myself, and then come back fresh in the morning to record this video for you. So, you know, I'm not beating myself up on not getting a video recorded yesterday. Um, it's fine, things happen, life happens, you've, you've got to adapt, you know, and as you adapt your patterns, as you adapt other people's patterns for how you want, how you want them to be, um, we need to learn to adapt our expectations of ourselves. Okay, so finally, you'll notice a lovely red lipstick. So this one is called Hong Kong by Night, and it's just in the Sephora range, so they've got a little cities range, so quite inexpensive. Um, as my friends know, and you will come to know, I adore red lipsticks, so Every time I wear a red lipstick, trust me, it's a different shade. <laughs> so, but you'll get to see all of them. I have so many videos planned for you guys. I think I sat down and I wrote out like about 15 ideas for new videos. So you're going to be hearing a lot of, a lot from me and um, hopefully a lot of them will be, you know, very entertaining or helpful to you or both, I mean, ideally both. Um, and you might even get to see Johan uh, come and visit for one of the videos. He's actually asleep now, so it's like, yes, now's the time, quick, get the video done. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's enough for me. Um, I hope that this kind of helps you, I guess, with a little bit of encouragement, just to tell you that you're not the only person that has has the idea and then it ends up, ends up being something different when it comes off the hook. Um, if you can have that same idea carry through, then that's awesome. Um, but if you don't, then that's okay too. You know, that exact sketch might come through in a different pattern a little bit later down the line for you. And um, yeah, that sketch that I've done for for the other show, I'm sure that that will become a reality now that I know much better how things work um, from doing both the eagle show and the parrot show. So anyway, like I said, enough from me. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you all real soon. Mwah.